Such a sweet man. How many eggs? Two. Here's one little duck egg in there. There's nothing better than a clean chicken coop. On my own doing chores this morning. Junior went to work with his dad. It's cold. It is like the worst April Fool's joke ever. April 1st and it's like 20 degrees outside. But I want to show you our new quail setup and then I am going to show you some of our seeds that we're getting started today. So here we go. Okay, so we have decided, or I have decided to go ahead and do a garden this year. And I know that seems kind of crazy since I'm pregnant and doing June and it could a little, get a little bit iffy, but originally I was going to do no garden at all or maybe just a few tomato plants, but now I have a list of things that I want to plant and I've gotten a lot of seeds and I want to kind of go over all of this with you guys. So my layout is really simple. I'm only doing half of the garden space that I did last year to kind of keep it manageable for me, um, but I can still get a lot out of a small garden space. And so the way that it's set up now is I have two arches and I have different rows, different areas for different things. So my plan is to, to plant tomatoes, cucumbers, maybe carrots, all of my herbs that I normally plant, beans, watermelon, squash, peppers, and lots and lots of flowers. But I also need to do lettuce too. But I think my plan is to keep expanding as much as I possibly can. Now, I did get started on, on my tomato plants. You can see this little guy, he's, uh, he's considered leggy. Um, but I, I don't mind leggy plants. And I'm actually gonna link a video up in the description down in the description and up in the box above um, showing you how to kind of fix leggy plants. It's very, very simple. You basically just pull dirt around them so that they keep rooting deep and they straighten up a little bit. You don't have to throw out your leggy plants. Um, they're leggy for us because we don't have a grow light this year and I'm too cheap to buy one. <laughs> so I save them and they do great. I still get an abundant harvest from all of my leggy plants. So I'm not really concerned about that. I do want to go over some of the things that we're planning this year. Some of these things are new. Um, and the first thing that I'm really excited about is all of my flowers. So a lot of our flowers are coming back from years past. And so that's really exciting. And I love cut flowers. And so I am planting a lot more cut flowers this year. We took down a bunch of trees um, along our fence line in the winter and so that leaves a wide open sunny space um, some of its partial shade for flowers and so I am going a little bit crazy this year the first thing that I wanted to find was ranunculus I don't know if you guys have ever heard of them but they're pretty awesome and they are kind of like peonies but um they grow much quicker they don't need as much time to grow and they're beautiful they come in so many vibrant colors I do want to find the ranunculus that they're like a blush color, but I haven't been able to find them locally. I got these from Home Depot. My husband found them. I told him, I said, if you find them, get them. And so they come in these little, they call them comb, comb pods. And you basically soak them for two hours and then you put them in the ground. So I'm going to do that this week. We have a few warm days coming up and I'm going to go ahead and get those planted. And within 90 days, they have blooms on them. So it should work out perfectly. Um, the next thing that I am 
planting that I'm really excited about are Flemish Antique Poppies. I have never grown these before, ever, and they are so pretty and they're an annual, so you'll probably have to plant them every year, but they have large double blooms and shades of rose, all striped, all striped with creamy white. Aren't they pretty? They look kind of like a peony too, but I didn't want to take the time to buy peonies because they can be really expensive. And especially if we're not going to be here for the next five years to really get the full growth of them, I didn't want to put all that time into it. So I'm getting things that look like peonies that are still great for cut flowers. So this Flemish Antique Poppy was the next thing I got. I also got two other varieties of poppies, which I'm excited about. Um, I'm, I like the red one. I love the red one. They're called American Legion. And then there's a purple one called Hungarian Blue Bread Seeds. <laughs> Isn't that funny? And both of these you just direct seed. Um, this one says, this edible bread seed poppy produces dazzling purple petals that give way to large seed filled pods. The pods are excellent for arranging, adding unique form to designs. The seeds are a light blue color with nutty flavor. That is interesting. Yeah, so I'm excited about both of these. And then of course I gotta get my zinnias. I actually have a lot of zinnias left over from last year. And so this time I got specifically purple ones cause I like the purple ones. And then I got some common yarrow. This is obviously medicinal. And you know, I'm all about medicinal herbs and I just need some around here, which I figure even if we sell the house, our new, our new owner should love it too, right? And of course in every package of uh, Baker Creek seeds that you get, you get some free packages. And so I've ordered twice this year and I've gotten the same thing. And the, what I've gotten is purple Russian tomato. I've never grown that. So I think I'm going to try to start those from seeds this week. Okay. So the other things that I am growing this year is obviously my black giant. I love my black giant tomato and my Cherokee purple. So these are my two favorite tomatoes of all time. I love them. I love the taste of them. They grow really, really well for me. I think I've kind of mastered the tomato, which I'm proud of, <laughs> but um, I'm really excited about those. I got two different kinds of lettuces this year. There's that Russian tomato again. Um, I got Paris, oh no, I only got one kind. I got Paris Island Koss. I've never grown this before either, but it's kind of like a romaine and I wanted to try it because we're on a romaine kick right now. And we go through a lot of lettuce and I really, really want to grow as much lettuce as possible. I grew all of our lettuces for our lunch last summer and I really have missed it since it's been gone. We buy so much lettuce and there's so much contamination that can happen with salmonella and listeria and all this stuff you know with big companies and i just want to avoid it at all costs if that's even possible but we'll see um i'm going to attempt to grow sunflower seeds or sunflowers again this year this is the mammoth gray striped i don't know how that's going to work out but i'm going to try it i try it every year and i fail um, i'm going to try to do the moon and stars watermelon i hear great things about this so I'm gonna to try to plant that in a little garden. I might, might try to grow this squash this year. Um, I think they're pretty, they're beautiful, and they'll be tasty too, and they store really well. And then I have okra, but I don't know if I'm gonna to try to plant it this year. And then I have the Danver carrots. And then there's other things like, we'll probably do green beans. I do the, um, oh, what are they called? Canter, the Canter green beans. These are a market green bean. I've grown them for a couple years now. They do really well. They don't have gigantic um, beans inside. They're like a really slim market bean. And those are the types of green beans that we like. And then I will probably just buy squash from the store, uh, like pre-grown squash. I do that most of the time because um, I can find organic squash at like Home Depot and Lowe's. And so it's just one less thing for me to grow. But that is what is on my list of things to grow this year <laughs> and it doesn't seem like a lot and yet when i look at it i'm like okay amy well good luck with this and a baby and being pregnant <laughs> but i i'm actually most excited about my flowers um which is so funny because they don't really give me anything except joy but the new thing now is keep what's bringing you joy right <laughs> So that's what I'm doing. I'm doing what brings me joy. And it'll really spice up the curb appeal for 
the house um, for next year whenever we decide to sell, if we decide to sell next year. And it gives me more experience with cut flowers, which I would love to have a big cut flower garden at um, a, on a new property if that time ever comes sometime soon. So, um, you know, for us, we are, I just felt really weird not having a garden. I feel like growing your own food is really important. You never know what's gonna happen with the economy or with our food system. And that's something I really wanted to talk to you very briefly about. Okay, so I'm about to go on a little mini uh, informational rant on the agricultural system and the flooding in Nebraska right now. So if you don't wanna hear about that, skip forward like five minutes. Otherwise, here we go. Um, you know, I don't know if you guys have really noticed all of the flooding that's going on in Nebraska in the Midwest, but a lot of that is our food source. Uh, maybe not mine specifically or yours, but it is going to affect our country a lot. Um, they've had massive floodings, tons of farms have been lost, and it's really important to understand the impact that this could have on our, our economy. Um, wheat fields, soybean fields, corn fields are the three main things that have been lost. The biggest issue here is that, you know, the United States and China are in this trade war, and so a lot of these farmers have been storing up their grains um, from last year to make more money off of this year because they, this trade war is just boggling them down. Well, they've lost all of that. All of the stuff that they had stashed away from the last harvest is gone now. And so, you know, while it may not affect you directly, the wheat and the grains, um, it's going to affect your livestock. It's going to affect your livestock feed costs. Um, it might even affect <clears throat> your grocery store costs. I mean, out in the Midwest, they've not only lost crops, and they're not able to plant crops right now because the, the fields are so saturated and they're expecting even more rain and more snow and more flooding. But so not only have they lost crops and they're unable to plant crops, but they have also lost over a million head of cattle and livestock. And so that, if you buy your meat from the store, um, you're probably gonna see an increase in pricing for meat and you're probably gonna see a decrease in product because a lot of the meat that you're buying is coming from the Midwest. And so I feel like now is a really important time to talk about that because even just, you know, as homesteaders, we, we grow our own food because we wanna know where our food comes from. We wanna take control of our food system. This is a prime moment and a prime time to do it because it shows us just how fragile our agricultural system is. And it's so easy to grow your own food. I mean, the first three years are hard of gardening. Don't get me wrong. You're going to learn how to garden the first three years. But growing your own meat, even if it's just meat rabbits, or growing your own food in some way or another can help empower you in those situations where you might have an increase at the grocery store or you might see a decrease in product at your grocery store. And so I just wanna encourage you, if you've ever thought about gardening or homesteading or raising your own meat, now this year, this year especially, is a great time to get started, even if it's as much as growing just a tomato plant on your back porch to get you started and get your feet wet. Because I assure you, this year in the Midwest is not going to be amazing. Um, the NOAA has, uh, released so much information about the weather and how much flooding we're supposed to get in the Midwest. I'm not even in the Midwest. We saw flooding here on the East Coast like crazy last year and it's even worse in the Midwest this year. And so we ourselves are actually bracing for flooding too because we're in that minor region but the Midwest is in, in severe and moderate region. And so we know how, we weren't even in a minor region last year and we had massive flooding. And so if they're in a serious region, a major or moderate flood zone, then I can only imagine what it's gonna be like for those farmers. And so just remember that when you're homesteading and your reasons for homesteading, that our food system is so fragile and it's so important to even just learn how to grow your own food because I'm not trying to be a doomsday person, but it's very real. I mean, we've put our trust in our food system so much that we just, um, we would be crippled, literally, if we didn't have these big farms anymore. And so farming industry was already on decline with bankruptcies and um, really big agricultural companies putting the small family farm out of business. And so there's just a lot going on in agriculture right now. And I know a lot of people think it doesn't affect them, but it does. It is going to affect you. In one way or the other, it's going to affect you because food is always necessary and needed. And somehow, some way, even if you grow your own food, it's either going to affect you or your neighbor or your, your family member or whatnot. So I encourage you to, to brush up on those skills, try to plant some of your own food this year, and um, kind of just gain knowledge. If you can't plant your food or grow your own meat, 
then just gain the knowledge that you need to do it in case it comes down to it one day. Okay, so now that I have uh, maybe bored you with my agricultural talk, I want to talk to you about my quail system setup real quick. Um, I'm pretty proud of it. We have a breeding system right now in place, and our quail are doing pretty good, um, the quail that we have left. And we moved them this weekend to a new hutch. And so it's actually an old rabbit hutch that we had, and it's not the prettiest thing in the world. You'll see uh, t-shirts above the doors, and that's because there's holes there that we had to plug because squirrels were getting in. And my husband's gonna just get some two by fours or whatever to put up there so the squirrels can't get in. Squirrels will kill your quail. Um, they won't eat them or anything, but they will kill them. Kill them. Um, but quail love to be in confined spaces. And so what we did was we put a lot of branches, pine branches in there, and they absolutely love it. They thrive now, where before they were really skittish, they were they would just run around like crazy because there was nowhere for them to hide. So quail love to be in confined spaces, and so we put the pine branches in there, and one side of the cubby hole we put straw, and it is gonna get dirty. You're gonna have to change it out every once in a while, which we're understanding of that, but um, it's just, it's really great for them. They, they're really thriving in this kind of environment. And then we put a dust bathing system in there for them, which I don't believe I have a video to show you of that, but it's just a, a pan with dirt and diatomaceous earth and sand and all that good stuff. And they love that. Quail are poultry. And so they love taking a dust bath as all birds do. And it's just a really simple setup. They're doing really, really well. And we cannot wait for them to start laying and hatching our own quail on the homestead. So they're doing good. A lot of you have asked for updates and I'm sorry, it's just been a while. It's been hard to get through things and having so many things going on. We have a lot of projects going on around the house. Some of them are new that we've taken on and it's like, oh my goodness, one project after the other. We have renovations going on in the basement. We have um, renovations going on in the in the bedrooms and and getting ready for baby. Baby will be here in June, and um, we are in April now, and it's like we're not ready at all. <laughs> But we'll get there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was brief and it was mostly me talking and who wants to hear a talking head all the time? But it's the easiest way to give you updates. So wish me luck on Garden 2019. Wish me luck on the quail. <laughs> wish me luck on the leggy tomatoes. And wish me luck on finishing bacon this baby. And um, we will See you again soon i have a lot more videos coming up for you guys in the coming weeks i've just been recording 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 because we've been so many so many things that we're doing some of them are mom videos cleaning videos house videos uh decor videos some of them are just common videos like this some of them are recipes some of them are just random because that's just our life and it's real life and we are okay with that all right guys have a great day and happy homesteading